Hi, I'm Terry Tiller, and today I want to talk to you about the issue of pH and cancer. Now, if you, you may or may not have seen me do a clip in a, in a documentary on this subject, and one of the things I talked about was the Nobel Prize that was won by Dr. Otto Warburg, talking about a cell acidity and cancer. Uh, a lot of people want to challenge uh, experts out there, like Dr. Robert Young, who talks about pH, and a lot of people like to believe that it's all hocus pocus, and there's lots of different theories on it. What I really want to tackle today, though, is this idea that you're going to hear on forums, and you can even hear in documentaries, a lot of experts who are making it sound like tackling cancer is simply a matter of elevating the pH. I think anyone who believes that is seriously lacking some depth of understanding, um, that's a bad strategy for several reasons. Number one, most people can't get their pH up fast enough before, they, before their lifespan will be up, so to speak. You can't get the pH up fast enough. It, it takes time. We're talking about lots of base. We're talking about real cellular acidity. Do you, do you really want to clear all that out of the body? That takes time. And many people don't have that level of time. But I also want people to question the idea that cancer is very multifactorial. It's not a simple issue of just pH. That's really an oversimplification. There are many things that can, that, there are many reasons. For example, there are many hormonal uh, type cancers that a lot of women experience such as estrogen dominance, okay? uh, simply raising the pH doesn't change that automatically. There are many other multifactorial things, but here's a something I want to leave you with today, and we'll tackle this issue in more depth another day. There was a, uh, a poll online that I found polling people who have cancer diagnoses right now, and they polled 1,700 people to find out what, what their pH was at the time of their diagnosis. Now, 47% uh, were at 4.5, which A, establishes the theory that pH is a major issue in cancer. I'm not, here, I'm not here to deny that. It's a major issue. It's just not the only issue. That's an oversimplification. 8% uh, were at 5. 9% were at 5.5. 10% uh, of the people had a pH of 6. 11% had a pH of 6.5. 7% had a pH of 7. And 9% had a pH of 7.5. Now, a lot of this was probably done by home testing, so there's some variance, some subjectivity. What we're trying to look at here is just the general pattern. And the idea behind pH in cancer uh, and the idea of treating or, or strategizing around beating cancer by, through pH is that once the pH raises above 7, that all cancer cells should die, basically, because the, the cancer cells shouldn't be able to thrive in, in that level of alkalinity. But here's the interesting thing. We see in this poll, we have 16% of people who have a pH in the range where cancer shouldn't be able to survive yet at the time of diagnosis. And I just want you to let that stir and be something to get the brain thinking that cancer is not as simple as pH. Otherwise, I don't see how these two things can simultaneously be true. I know they're not, but I want you to, to really grasp that reality. If 16% were above the, the, the 7 mark of pH, um, then cancer cannot be as simple as dealing with pH. So whenever you hear someone trying to advise you and give you that kind of advice, I suggest you politely uh, move on and go look for someone who sees this issue as a much more complex issue because it's a multifactorial issue. And the same thing like we talked about with the fruit issue. Anyway, that's all I want to leave you with today. Perhaps I'll do some more videos in the future on pH and cancer. For now, I'm Terry Tilton signing out. Have a fantastic day and treat cancer with strategy, not with magic bullets including the magic bullet ideology that all you have to do is raise your pH. Take care. Have a great day.